Uh, Mr. Wale Bakari joins us now. He's an analyst. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Chimbali. Nice well, people are already talking about uh, what happens thereafter, that announcement by the president and that of Labour also. What are your thoughts? What are you hearing now? Well, basically, uh, first, I'd like to congratulate Nigerians, really, for the way they were able to come together as a people and express um, themselves during these trying times. Um, a lot of people might think, really, that um, probably the country, uh, the people were shortchanged by 97 Naira and all that, but I think it's a win-win situation, really, at the end of the day. Uh, Labour was Labour had to do the only thing that was left at that point in time, which was to agree to the 97 Naira and allow the country to begin to move forward. We, the government, at this point, needs to sit back and look at what has been expressed freely by the generality of the people and that is that we need to be taken into account uh, the days when things were forced down our throats are long gone the government we will hold accountable and i think that is the um, primary the primary thing that has come out of all this um, but going forward um, the government has put forward the blueprint basically the short document they call it um, which is supposed to be uh, the ground norm for what will happen with the savings from the removal of the petroleum subsidy. It is now up to the people to monitor the government through that document and hold the government okay. to task. Well, some questions for Labour also. I mean, that those who wonder, uh, even though they've got reservations, they're entitled to the opinion, as they say. But did Labour, how will Labour help here in terms of the economics? Because you have people who thought that, all right, yes, you, you called up the strike, but present us with economics, the figures. I mean, you're also in that industry, uh, members of labor. So what is, would there be anything wrong, for instance, if they were to say, well, government arrived at this, but yes, uh, we have to accept it, but here are the figures. This is what we think government should do henceforth, or subsequently, this adds up to this and all of this, but it just drops and then seven naira for later, they call up the strike and... Well, the arithmetic like for arriving at the 97 naira figure, is still a bit unclear to me, but um, I think what Labour wanted initially was um, 65. Labour insisted on 65 naira, a reversal to the status quo, and then um, discussions going forward on what the real price will be. But uh, the issues surrounding how much is actually being subsidized, whether it's 45 naira, whether it's 77 naira, um, is something that will still need to be worked out by the people that are. I'm more capable of doing that. But what we should be more concerned with at this time, um, I think, is going forward, what are we going to do with what is going to be saved? How are the people going to hold government to task or take government to task over what they've promised, over what government has promised? I don't subscribe to the school that government is uh, deaf and dumb. I think there might actually have been some um, good intentions, but uh, the manner of um, presenting it to the public might have left a little bit to be desired. But then we all learn from these things. Maybe the, gov maybe the president needs to look more closely at his inner circle of advisors before coming out and um, talking to the people or making pronouncements that will have such far reaching consequences. But the thing is, you've now set before us a list of to a to do list with the money that is going to be saved. We are talking of 1.14 trillion. Do you trillion. still believe that mm. we'll still be saving that amount, considering the fact that we're no longer at 141 and it seems that the government still has to subsidize one way or another? Do you, will well, we still be able to achieve that program? Well, what we are looking at now is probably about 50% of the initially um, targeted sum. Well, what that basically means is that the government might not be able to do everything that was on the original shopping list. But then, even if it is just one item, if it is just two items, take for instance, um, power, that you are, already you have a budget for power in the 2012 budget. There, has been, there have been budgets for power over the years. What has happened to them? Now you've got this um, supplementary figure allocated from the subsidy that is going into power. Exactly how is it going to be deployed? Now, where labor should be up and doing is not just leading people out to protest against the increase. Now you've agreed to a particular figure. What are you going to put in place? What are the mechanics you are going to put in place to guarantee that 
whatever money comes in is going to be used judiciously. There are still a lot of things that the government needs to do, which we feel uh, that the government needs to do to further bring down, for instance, the cost of governance and so many other things to make the Nigerian people feel that, yes, this sacrifice that you are asking us to make is actually worth making because you two are on the same line. But like, like uh, to answer your question again, what... Whether it's fifty percent, whether it's twenty-five percent, whatever amount of money is going to come in needs to be closely monitored. It needs to be closely uh, checked to be sure that it goes through the right way and doesn't just end up in another form of corruption or end up with another type of cabal. While we are trying to run away from one cabal. Uh, okay. One, you know, okay. one other uh, aspect that some Nigerians are already talking about is uh, well, the quick fix. And if you talk about these palliatives and you talk about all of those that will come, even the uh, Mark, we just uh, highlighted some of the concerns of some Nigerians knowing for all that the petrol price is now at 97 naira and they still very much doubt if it's going to get all the palliatives uh, promised yeah. when it was uh, 141. Uh, how can they quickly see some of these uh, away from the buses that they say they have deployed? Uh, what do you think that we can quickly uh, readily see as Nigerians uh, uh, so that they can now say yes, we're quite sure that definitely something bigger and better is coming. Well, um, to my mind, I think one area that, is, that Nigerians are very passionate about is the condition of the roads, really. And um, since the roads have been identified as one of the infrastructural um, issues to be addressed with these palliatives, a, um, a concise effort, a concise movement by the government towards fixing but even if it's just one of the major roads, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway or the Benin or the Expressway, that you are going to, that government is going to concentrate upon immediately, and begin to work on in such a way that within a matter of months, people can actually take the Benin or the road, for instance. It's been the sore point in this country now for years and years and years. You keep on hearing figures being bandied around concerning that road. Why is it impossible for one government to? to face that road and tackle it and get it done. It isn't, it, it isn't rocket science. They are not reinventing anything. It is just the political will that is required to get the job done. If government in the short term decides that, okay, let me give the people, Nigerians are not difficult people to satisfy. Let me give the people something to show them that we are actually working and we are sticking with our words. Comment on this if you will. I mean, there are those who may have glossed over it, but you, now you talked about the roads infrastructure transport sector. I mean, how have, have people ever thought about the fact that the cost of fuel can actually be reduced if uh, your maritime services are working, if the rail transportation system is working to take the pressure off the roads? All of this means uh, what other countries have using it to lower that price. But here we are focusing on so many things. And uh, Well, it is inevitable that Nigeria has to move from road transportation to other means of mass transportation. It is, it is impossible to sustain the road transportation system the way it is. One, the, pr the price of petrol will continue to rise. We need to be able to get to a point where people can, people like you and I can leave our cars behind at home and hop on a form of public transportation to get to where we're going. Inevitably, we t when we talk about maritime transportation, for instance, there's no part of this country, I believe, that is better suited for maritime transportation than Lagos, because the water is around, you know, Lagos is almost an island, water surrounds Lagos. But why has it been impossible for Lagos to come up with, like, what, an ocean port? To, uh, well, not necessarily an ocean port, but a very a, a comfortable and workable um, ferry system, for instance, that could move people consistently, comfortably from one part of Lagos to another. So it's a whole big picture. Really. It, is, it is, and um, what the least that the people, the Nigerian people can expect is um, processed thought, processed thinking towards how to resolve their situation and not um, any kind of um, ad hoc um, movement that doesn't eventually yeah. lead to lasting solutions. Are people likely to just pick themselves up? and move on with this without remembering and still having those figures in their heads or what comes to their mind when they go and see 97 Naira per litre. How do you see all of this going? Uh, well, um, obviously people are a bit disappointed. Um, but again, I think Nigerians had gotten to a stage where the inevitability 
of the removal or some form of reduction in the subsidy um, are done on everybody. It was, it, I believe it had been accepted um, to some extent. You know, um, the major problem that people had really was the timing and the way it was being implemented. And of course, the natural distrust for government that has existed in Nigeria over time, which, um, to be fair, cannot really be attributed to just this government. It's been uh, a long line situation that pe the people have always felt that government hasn't been truthful to them. Mm -hmm. Do you think the government has learned any lessons from this? Well, I would expect so. I would expect so. Like I said, um, I think, well, judging from the president's broadcast, um, the breach of the broadcast and um, the way he presented himself, I think government has learned something. Um, and I think it will be furthermore in the interest of government to um, internalize the fact that it is not going to be business as usual in, the, in this country anymore. People have been sensitized to the power that they hold to make things uh, to bring about change in the society. And I, I foresee a situation where that will be utilized more and more. Especially when people realize that it is not just the federal government that, uh, that is accountable to them. The state governments are there. When you look at the money that was originally planned to be saved, the one point um, one three four trillion from the uh, subsidy removal, the federal government was going to get just um, a little under 50% of that. Almost um, 300 billion or thereabouts was going to the state government. About 400 billion. Yeah, yeah, 400 billion was going to the state government. Over 200 billion was going to the local governments. Now, who holds these tiers of government accountable, especially the local government? They've got their own schedule of duties as dictated in the Constitution. Nobody follows up on these people. And that is one of the areas where corruption is most rife in this country. The state governments are there. The governors have tremendous security votes that nobody questions them about. All attention is on the federal government. Yeah, but did we expect the governor to speak up much more than they did this time? Were people well, I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't expect, I didn't expect them to speak. Because you're, you're expecting them to bite the finger that is going to feed them, basically. Mm. Yeah, the governors are, more than the federal government, the governors are the ones that would have benefited more from the removal of subsidy than any other tier of government. One, because they'll be getting a stash of money that practically nobody is going to look at them to account for. Already, the way things are, they are the, they, they are, they are, well, apart from the local government, they are the tier of government that is not being held accountable as much as they should be held accountable. Uh, everybody concentrates on the government, on the federal government. Anything happens in the country, here, yeah, Jonathan. The truth of the matter is that each tier of government has got its fear of responsibility. And people should realize that if certain things go wrong, talk to your, you know, face your state governors, face your local government chairman, let them explain to you why things are the way they are. And that is the only way we will be able to move forward. Uh, eventually, we should be able to see ourselves as the guardians, as the gatekeepers of all theaters of government. I'm not forgetting, really, yeah. those, the fellows at the National Assembly. That is another group of people that, the, uh, that Nigerians need to really shine their searchlight on. Because, because they're the ones, look at how much, they, how much is budgeted for the National Assembly in a year. Nobody, they, they, nobody holds them accountable. How did they arrive at such figures? But who's talking about the prices of foodstuff in the market? How are they going to come down in spite of the fact that it's now not like seven naira, everyone? No longer a hundred and something? Well, that's part of the Nigerian um, conundrum, really. Once, it, once prices go up, they never return to their original um, price or to the original state, no matter what. Even if the government are reverted to 65 naira per liter, I can assure you that the prices might have marginally come down. Oh dear. But that is our own, that is part of what we do to ourselves as the people. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, you know, the issue of trust came up over and over again, mm -hmm. and you just mentioned it now, not just about trust being absent between the people and the government, but do we trust ourselves in the sense that, uh, let's look at labor now, and when labor finally said, okay, guys, strike hold off, a host of people felt shortchanged, almost like they did not trust even the labor they had trusted to represent them in the first place. Yeah, and that's sad, really, but it's, all, it's also reflective of the way we've come as a country over the past um, several decades. Nobody trusts anybody. Nobody trusts that anybody will do something just out of plain altruism anymore. Um, Labour, I believe, 
took the decision that Labour took in the best interest of the people at the time, especially considering all the um, prevailing circumstances. How do we begin to correct that um, amongst ourselves, the issue of trust? Build it, as it were. Well, we need, we need to begin to walk the talk that we talk some of the, some of the time. Um, Nigeria is one of the most religious countries in the world. We believe so much in all the big religions, but we do very little to actually live out what we profess. Um, the average Nigerian, you know, uh, while, it might, while it might be a good person, really, but we're we, we quick to, we, we, we're quick to, sub, to subjugate our principles on the altar of expediency. You know, in the and spirit we of need to begin to change that, really. Uh, quickly, in the spirit of transparency, uh, would it be wrong for Nigerians to ask the government and labor to tell them how they arrived at 97 Naira? No, of course, Nigerians, are, like Nigerians should be able to request in the, in the spirit of the Freedom of Information Act now to request for any information that we want. That so, so that they can know the middle ground what, yes, it to is, what, to what it, they it gave It is them. up to government now to explain to us how you arrived at 97, especially uh, given the fact that we don't spend coins in Nigeria anymore. How are we going to be paying the 97 Naira uh, you know, that uh, government is asking us to pay? But on a more serious note, we need to know how you arrived at the 97 Naira. Labour has said it to the unilateral decision by the federal government. So Labour really doesn't need to explain to us, but it's the federal government that needs to say this is how we arrived at 97 Naira per litre. Is it too much to ask, or are we being hasty here, if people say uh, maybe, I mean, is this going to affect the way elections turn out in terms of consciousness, participation, we will ask more questions uh, next time? I would hope so, really, Chamberlain. I would hope so, because um, it will be sad if after so, um, if after lives were lost, um, the deprivations that people have gone through in the last one week, people still, f people quickly forget that um, for, good or e for good or ill, they voted this government into office. And they have the power to vote this government out if after, um, the, if after its term they decide that we have been shortchanged, we have been, um, we, we didn't get what we voted for. Okay, then we should be able to look at. Um, I was actually talking about starting from local government so everybody just gets involved so that even the professor can be a local government chairman. Yes, it is, it is necessary. So we need to get to that point very quickly. All right then.